Welcome back. All right, so uh, recap, and I'm doing it a little bit different tonight because I wasn't home for these games. I was at this game, so therefore that changes how the recaps work, right? And this is why I don't go to games on really busy nights. This is why I don't go to a Vancouver game if there's 8, 10, 15 games. It's just there's no way I can come home and do a recap video and live. So uh, we have three games to talk about from tonight. We'll start off talking about the Wings and the Hawks. I would love for the Wings to stay in the hunt for a playoff spot. I would love that for them. And, I mean, you know, a game against Chicago, uh, there there could have been a down downbeat here, but there really isn't. So it's Staylock versus Huso in this one. Now Chicago gets off to that quick start, 15-51. I mean, quick start, meaning in the first period they get that lead. On a power play, it's Radish from Reichel and Athanasiu. And then at 1758, Radish gets his second goal of the period from Gutman and Murphy. So after the first period, it's 2-0 for Chicago. The encouraging thing is that Detroit doesn't just roll over. In fact, they had a great second period. Wallman scores from Cider and Chase on at 253. And I could not be happier to see Chase on getting a point tonight. And then he gets another. Larkin, beautiful power play goal by him. Chase on and Perron with the assists at 1834. So that ties the game and Chase on with a couple of helpers. I was looking at his numbers today and in the first two games with Detroit, no points, and he's a minus two. And I thought, I really hope he has some good games here. I would like to see Chase on stick around. Uh, Chase on's always working to get into the NHL. And as I explained in the video I did in the, the van on the way home, those are the guys that I, I really find inspiring their stories. So third period, uh, Joey Anderson over from Toronto. Scores from Jujar Kara at 6'10 and puts Chicago ahead. Again, what's encouraging for Detroit is they do not quit. Raymond scores from Haig and Sherrod at 12'36. And then Kubelik gets what would prove to be the game winner from Lindstrom and Kopp at 15'53. So I picked these cards at random. I picked Seth Jones, Lucas Raymond, Kirill Kaprizov, Josh Morrissey, Troy Terry, El Elias Patterson, meaning... I picked star players for each team. I didn't know which one was going to end up on the scoreboard at the end of the night. But yeah, Raymond's there, and he's in the three stars. Your three stars are Kubalik, Radish, and Raymond. So Kubalik, former Chicago Blackhawk, gets that winning goal against them. The shots in this one, 12-10 Detroit in the first, 19-3 Detroit in the second, 10-7 Detroit in the third. They outshot Chicago 41-20. Uh, power plays, both teams won for three on the power play. Hits 18 to 11 for Chicago. Staylock saves 37 out of 41. Huso, not that busy, but good. 17 saves on 20 shots. So, you know, Staylock, nice to see him back in action tonight. Uh, but he does take the loss, which in Chicago has kind of been the storyline this year, hasn't it? All right, next up, Minnesota and the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets are in trouble. And, I mean, I've been talking about this for weeks, but with what's going on with the Jets right now, Calgary's not that far behind. Neither's Nashville. And so the Jets really have to figure this out now. There can't be all this sunshiny talk about, well, they'll get it. Ah, they'll be fine. And I've, I've heard that from some media and I've seen seen some comments online like, oh, they'll be fine. I, I think we got to get past that. It's Flurry versus Hellebuck. Minnesota gets the only goal of the first period. It's Marcus Foligno from Sunquist and Middleton at 14-14. So it's one nothing Minnesota after one even though Minnesota gets outshot by a ratio of 3-1 to one in that period. So this is part of the problem as well, is that whether you want to look at the goaltending in Winnipeg or if you want to look at the defensive breakdowns, whichever way you want to look at it, it's just not working out in their favor, even though they're outplaying teams at some points too. So second period at 7.06, Freddie Goudreau scores from Felino and Sunquist. That two-goal lead doesn't last that long. At 7.36, so 30 seconds later, Logan Stanley finally gets a goal. Uh, he was quoted in the media today as saying he's glad he stayed in Winnipeg. He's happy there. Good. Um, and Mastikov and Ehlers with the assists there. But less than a minute later, Hartman gets that two-goal lead back for Minnesota from Kaprizov and Middleton. And then before the period's out at 17-15, Nino Niederreiter gets goal number 201 in his NHL career. And I believe that's point number 400 as well. Schmidt and Connor with the assists on that. So it's a back and forth, but Winnipeg's still down. By a goal going into the third, and in the third, Flurry shut the door. They pull the goaltender. That allows, at 19-22, Shaw to score from Zuccarello into the empty net. And Minnesota wins this one on the road. They are now 9-0-2 in their last 11. 11-game point streak. They're, they won this one 4-2. Uh, for Winnipeg, this definitely hurts. And again, uh, we, can, we can talk about how close they are to Colorado, but 
Winnipeg was like one point out of first in the division not that long ago. So your three stars in this one are Fleury, Felino, and Niederreiter. So former Minnesota Wild player Niederreiter, now with Winnipeg, gets into the three stars. Shots on that. Winnipeg dominates 15 to 5 in the first, 19 11 in the second, 14 to 7 in the third. Shots end up being 48 to 23 for Winnipeg. Power plays, Minnesota 0 for 1, Winnipeg 0 for 3. The hits were 16 to 16. Marc Andre Fleury, 46 saves on 48 shots. Great night for him. Hellebuck, 19 saves on 22 shots. So again, whether you want to look at this as a goalie coming in and stealing it, or however you want to look at it, Winnipeg, definitely a team that's in trouble right now. All right, last but not least, uh, the Vancouver Canucks at home against Anaheim. So I saw a comment about how boring it was. It, live it wasn't, and when you're there in person, it's always different than what you see on TV. So uh, it was Dostal versus Demko. I have to say, Dostal, to me, is a keeper. I, I think he is going to be an excellent goaltender for Anaheim. I think as soon as next year, he's ready to be part of that battery. Whether it's Gibson that he's with, whether it's Stolarz, however they figure this out. And I know Gibson's got a contract and he's he's under, he's got term as well. But there's always that discussion about Gibson and does he, does he get traded, does he not? So sure, that'll probably happen this summer too. Not that he'll get dealt. But Terry scored early on at 340. It was Terry from McTavish and Jones. And that was just one that, the Canucks defense lost track of Terry on that one. And again, that's the net I was right near. If you were watching on TV, I, I still think the reason people were able to pick us out of the crowd is my wife's hair and her really bright shawl that she was wearing. That's, I think, what it was. But because I was just wearing this, I was wearing black. So pretty hard to see. At any rate, the Canucks would answer. So there's a power play for Anaheim. And I, I realized that like Vancouver's power play or penalty kill isn't very good. But neither is Anaheim's power play, so um, as I put it to my wife when I was talking to her, it is the very resistible force and the very movable object. Who knows? So Miller would score a shorthanded goal from Pedersen at 14:44. Great play by Pedersen. And yeah, Miller buries it, and I'm still a Miller fan. I, it's not like I'm out burning his jersey or anything. I'm still a Miller fan. I know there's a lot of people that aren't, but I'm still there. And then in the second period, Kuzmenko gets one that I initially thought might have been Pedersen's goal, but hey, they all count. It's his 30th of the year. 30 goals for Kuzmenko. Beauvillier and Pedersen with the assist, that's at 14-23. But because we can't have nice things, it's 20 seconds later that McGinn scores from Zegers and Strom at 14-43. I was really impressed with the Canucks in that second period, especially early on, because, yeah, that puck was hardly ever in their zone. They were swarming. They did a really good job. They just, again, Dostal, I thought, had a good game. There's no goals in the third, and about halfway through the third, I said to Yvonne, I said, this one's going to end up going to overtime, and she agreed with me. And and that that was pretty clear halfway, because again, they were shots maybe from the outside. There wasn't really any concerted effort and long-term press that I saw that told me this game was going to be over. Plus, 7 o'clock start, the only late start, so it has to go to overtime, and I was considering maybe we'll see a shootout. Now, in the overtime, watching it live, I could see Miller was going to wire it. And I thought, you know, I wonder if Dostal's going to get this. Because Miller had, there was no there was no pass, there was nothing. It was going to be a goal or it was going to be a big save. And Miller wires it, gets the goal from Quinn Hughes at 20 seconds. And cue up Elton John because I'm still standing, starts playing. And I haven't seen the Canucks lose at home this year. So, good luck charm here. At any rate, Vancouver wins this one 3-2 to two in overtime. I think it's sad that I've got these magnets now for Reverse Retro, now that Reverse Retro is done, because they finally got all these, these decals in and all these magnets in. and I was all have them all on the board, but it's already passed. At any rate, the three stars in this one were Pedersen, Zegers, and Miller. I disagree with the order. I would have had Miller at number one. I would have had Pedersen at number three, but Zegers is very good. Uh, Troy Terry's very good. And uh, Cam Fowler had a good sense of humor about this one guy on the glass that was just yelling and swearing at him and banging on the glass. I don't know if you guys could see it on TV, but it was pretty loud. From our section, we could hear him, and he was... Fowler just kind of turned around and laughed at him. Like, I don't know if what what was expected to happen there, but it was it was odd. Anyways, shots on net in this one, 9-8 to eight Vancouver in the first, 12-7 to seven for Vancouver in both the second and the third. They only had one shot in the overtime. They didn't need more. That one went in the net. Final shots, 34-22 to 22 for Vancouver. Power plays, Anaheim over 2 Vancouver didn't have one. The other thing that I don't know if this got picked up on TV, the ref was letting everything go. 
he just let everything go. One of those two penalties, and that was what led to a five-on-three for Anaheim that was killed off. And, of course, the five-on-four, uh, it's a shorthanded goal for Miller. But, yeah, that one of them's a delay of game in that. And so he only called one that was an actual penalty. Outside of that, anything goes. Uh, there were high sticks. There was all kinds of stuff. There were cross-checks. It was just, yeah, no, I'm not calling. And, and even in the third, there was all kinds of stuff going on that, again, I don't know if it was shown on TV, but... Uh, again, I said to Yvonne, I said, I think the refs need to catch a plane or something because they're not calling anything. So uh, Dostal saves 31 out of 34. Uh, Demko saves 20 out of 22. The hits were 21 to 12 for Vancouver. Uh, Dakota Joshua, I love his hits. I think he's a good player. And again, uh, as I mentioned in the car, I am still on that that whole team tank thing, but it, it is still fun to see them win. It's just I would love to have seen them have a chance at the number one draft pick, but that's kind of something I've forgotten about. Not that they ever win draft lotteries either. So anyways, there you go. You guys are all caught up on tonight. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. And I was smart before we left. I recorded tomorrow's preview. So that will go live on the channel in the morning, which is good because I'm going to be going to bed pretty late. So Thank you guys so much for all your support. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you again soon.